Hey guys, I'll be starting the webinar very shortly. Thank you for checking in. Hey Luigi, how you doing? So about three minutes uh, ahead of uh, starting the webinar, I'm still checking the market, uh, still checking some of my positions here. So just hang tight. Kirby says your head and shoulders came in again. It sure did, you gotta trust the pattern. Sometimes it's very hard to do. This has been a three Maalox trade, but uh, I stayed the course. I'm short and uh, I'm convinced we're going down hard. I've been in a, uh, a very small camp. I mean, I listen to analysts all day. Nobody's, nobody's talking about this at all. I think we're going down 20% on the indexes. I said that before today's opening. Actually, I'm gonna try and find those charts. Graham says, I wish I hadn't been long crude oil. I told you guys to get out at the beginning of the week. Crude was at a heavy distribution, a long-term multi-year distribution area. So Kirby says, yes, I asked you about it. You said it had top. Yep, I think I, I was pretty consistent with that. I took a 7% on oil today. So I'm just looking at the TV, it says NASDAQ plunges 3%. No surprise here. I think we got another 27%, 20% to go. So Mike says, I bought your book and schedule a call with Zach on Sunday. Brilliant, Mike, good on you. I hope you have a good call. Zach's a good guy. Graham, it's all about learning. You know, life's a process. Believe me, I, uh, I've had my fair share of knocks. I bought a, a sold short of stock earlier, like a week ago. I'm always freaking early. Uh, IPGP, I shorted it at 202 and watch it go to 220 on me. But I was so convinced that this thing's coming down and today it got to about 210. I'm still losing eight bucks, but I'm convinced this thing's gonna come down. So, you know, it's, uh... so welcome to the webinar. Uh, I guess it's uh, right around starting time. So I'm just going to kick things off. Um, welcome to the last day of the uh, four day uh, live trading event. Uh, hopefully uh, you've gained some input. I'm going to go over, you know, a lot of things that I've said during the week. And I think this was actually a great week um, for a lot of reasons, right? Because you had so, you've had so much confluence and buffeting information out there in the world. And then yesterday you had the Fed come in. So a couple of weeks ago, I sent out an email, Sunday, February 21st. I said, the key reversal at the top of an ascending broadening suggests that there's gonna be a lower trajectory. And you know, I made a bunch of dough from that call. NASDAQ dropped out of bed. I bought these put options at $1. They went to eight. You know, I made six times my money. Then I rolled over the next week, made another half million dollars in that week. And uh, this is uh, today, I'm short Zoom. I've been short Zoom since the 15th. What is today, the 18th? So for the last three days, I sold it at 346.93. And today, I, this is an old graphic. I did this this morning when it was 322. It closed at 316. And so I may, I'm making exactly 30 bucks times two, 60 grand. Uh, in three days, shorting Zoom. I think there's another $100 to go lower. I've been saying it all week. 
you know, and so despite what the Fed does, despite what the market does, I look at what the price action and the patterns do. That to me is my, my whole reference. Uh, first off, can you guys hear me and see my screen clearly? I just want to make sure that I've got everything in order here. Um, okay, so everyone's saying yes. Okay, cool. And then I've also just had a bit of fun. I just wanted to kind of voice my opinion. I, I wanted a short, short GameStop, but I didn't want to short the stock because it's just too dangerous. The better thing would be to just to sell the calls. Uh, but I bought deep in the money puts. You know, it, I, you know, it means you don't have a lot of leverage. You're not going to make a whole lot. But I just felt like this thing had to go down. And I, it expires tomorrow, so we'll see where it is tomorrow. It's a game of chicken, you know, as to where we go. But I have been consistently saying for the last three weeks that I think, you know, the NASDAQ has topped. And now I feel the S&P, uh, you know, has to and probably the Dow. Um, so, you know, I sent my team out a graphic this morning because, you know, my marketing partner, Peter, we're very good friends. We talk all the time. And, you know, he always tells me just to get into an, you know, an S and P index fund, just trust it, whatever. And I said, look, you know, uh, I'm not getting in right now. And then, you know, a couple of days ago, I told him to, you know, move to the sidelines and get in cash. And he's a young guy. And he said, look, that's not the way to make money hopping in and out. And so fine. So, you know, he called me today and I said, S&P is going down 20%, but this is when I think it was still up. I did the chart right around here. So this was my analysis this morning, right, you know, before, you know, anything even happened. So this is the S&P up. I'll move to the real-time charts in a moment, but this is what I'm seeing, this broad, ascending, broadening price pattern. We see this on the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ's well ahead of the Dow or the S&P. So the S&P is just where, you know, I was looking at shorting it three weeks ago. And I think it's going to go in the same direction. And so we were trading at what, 39.50 right there at the time. And my pro pro you know, projected first target's about 3,500 and my second price target's around 3,400. So I think we're going to get a 20% drop out of here. And I said that this morning before we even started coming down. And then where was my... NASDAQ analysis at the time, uh, here it was. So, you know, again, this is what I've been talking about, you know, all week where you have this ascending broadening price pattern and a head and shoulders. And I said that this was the zone of opportunity right where this, and I'll, I'll, I'll you know, draw it again. And so my projected price target is somewhere around 11,000. So I think we're going to get at least a 20% drop. And I think this is going to fall out of bed pretty fast. And I've been saying that all week. And, you know, the Fed came out yesterday. It was all friendly. It was all lovey-dovey. Uh, and, you know, the market rallied. But um, I was pretty incredulous. And I was saying to you guys yesterday, look, I, I said today is the day of, you know, it's the moment. It's going to be the moment of truth. If it goes up, then, you know, it's going to break the pattern and I'm out. But this is why, you know, you got to stay the course. And I've been listening to, you know, I have like CNBC in the background here, a, a news show in the United States, you know, financial news show. And I'm listening to these panelists and nobody's bearish. Everybody's buying Apple. Uh, you know, everyone says Apple, you know, it's got 25% you know, or 25 PE. It's now at a value, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, and, 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 and nobody's paying attention to the price action or what's going on. And to me, the market's ahead of the news. And this, I think, was a very good lesson this week of how to trust the pattern. So I showed you this ascending broadening price pattern. Let me just redraw this because it's pretty important. I think right at the beginning of the week, I said, this is going to be the zone of opportunity. Right here. And we got right there. You can see we got to the upper end of the lower support line. And this to me was an inflection point. And I said yesterday, we get back here, then you know this thing's gonna go higher. On the other hand, I think it's gonna go that way. And the market voted now, and you know, I think we're just gonna, you know, come out of bed here. So in addition to that ascending broadening price pattern, we also had this head and shoulders. Now, you know, it rallied right to the peak. 
you know, of these shoulders, you know, pretty unusual. So sometimes the market will bust through here, you know, it'll sacrifice the few, the first soldiers through the gate. It'll kind of go back and then when it retests the neckline, which is simply the line drawn through the pattern, then if it's success, then it's really going to go. So if you have a retest, then it's going to go. So we're, you know, not too far away from a retest, whatever this is, 12,600 or so, probably about 310 on the uh, triple Qs. So right here is about 310, 309. And so that was in my Sunday uh, newsletter, you know, to sell under 310, because that was to me the area, if you retest this thing, it's really gonna confirm it. But for me, this price action is starting to point in the direction. So as I said, I look for the pattern, then I look for the price action, a key reversal, made a high and close on the low of the day on a big range bar. Now, one other thing, and what I said about, you know, was talking when I was talking about gold, I told our members to get out of gold at 2100. And it was just, you know, it was somewhat arbitrary, but it was really upon observation of the huge expansion in volatility. So you'll notice all the price bars from high to low in this region are so much bigger than anything that preceded. You can see all of these, you know, daily ranges are very small. And then in the last couple of weeks, you know, the ranges have been huge. You know, we've had five, six, seven, eight hundred, uh, you know, uh, pip ranges in the uh, QQQs. So you can see that this area, the volatility has picked up dramatically. And to me, this reflects a great deal of investor and uncertainty, emotion, anxiety. But to me, volatility always precedes change. So what had been an up market leading into this volatility, I think you know this volatility to me also substantiated that there's gonna be a change in direction. So you have a lot of uncertainty here. And to me, you have to look at the patterns to resolve the uncertainty. And so even despite the most dovish comments that any Federal Reserve chairman in my lifetime that I could ever recall, facing down a 6% GDP growth, a, you know, uh, uh, you know, bond yields that are going to the moon very quickly said, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm just standing pat. I'm, I'm not going to do anything. You're on your own. And, uh, you know, we'll see you later. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing. But, you know, and so on the strength of that, you know, the market rallied, you know, because it was the most dovish comments that any, it was just like shocking how dovish they were. But now the reality is setting in that, you know, the market is big, bigger than any one, one person, even Jerome Powell. So these armchair intellectuals, you know, Greenspan was the same, Chairman Greenspan in 2000, you know, kind of kept interest rates low and created all these asset bubbles. Uh, in 2007, Ben Bernanke said there's no problem in the subprime market. One year later, the whole, you know, whole world was almost taken down. And now Jerome Powell is, you know, obviously sticking his head in the sand and ignoring what the markets are saying. And, you know, the markets, you know, there's a lot of other markets that I'm looking at, which are reflective of the interest rate. So this is the other stock that I'm short. It's IPGP. And I looked at this huge double top, but I started shorting it right here early at around 202. And it went to 220 on me, but, you know, I just stuck to my guns. I'm still losing eight bucks on this stock. And, uh, you know, I think that it will, you know, still go much lower by, you know, guided by the pattern. You can see it's got a rounding top here and I think it's just going to get, you know, cratered. Um, so I've been short this stock, but what I'm looking at are these um, corporate bond instruments. You can see the investment grade corporate debt, you know, just all of this stuff is you can see this is the high yield bond debt, the HYG. So this is the junk bond and you can see what's happening. And you know, this is reflective of you know, the easiness to which corporations have been able to raise money. And so there are a lot of zombie companies out there, companies that should be you know, out of business that have been able to raise money in this easy money environment. And so with the, the, the Fed flooding the zone, you know, there's been uh, a lot, lot of distortions 
which I think are going to be now resolved. But, you know, this is all background noise. So it's just to me, I, I just look at this as another chart that's rolling over, but it has real impl impl implications, you know, in the real world. Um, these are the, um, the 10 years. And you can see that with these charts going down, it means interest rates are going higher. And you can see how fast these things. And today, after his remarks, you can see we just gapped lower, which means that interest rates jumped in the 10 years now over 1.7. Now, the average dividend yield on the S&P is 1.5. So now people are going to you know, bail out of stocks because they can get you know 1.7% on a risk-free treasury bond. And so, you know, I'm keeping an eye on these things because these things are going to be early indicators of, you know, a rollover. And if there's, so this is the high yield bond, um, which is the, so, is, so I think I, I showed you the LQD. So to me, this is going to be very reflective of, you know, what's happening in, you know, in the internals of corporations, how healthy are corporations. And you can see that this is gonna have real ramifications. This double topped. And so now you're gonna get you know, bankruptcies, companies that should be out of business who borrowed money, who now won't be able to repay. And then if you get one of these, which we had, uh, it will cause huge disruptions in the market. So that's just background noise. Um, like I said, even early today, I was projecting that the S&P was going to go down 20%, even when the S&P was higher today. Where's this thing? Here. So now the S&P 500 is starting to look like the NASDAQ did three weeks ago, where I you know, spotted this thing at the top of this pattern, and then it just fell out of bed. And I think we're pretty much at the same juncture. I drew this yesterday. And I didn't know if we would have one more push, you know, to go and contest these highs. You know, we may, but I don't think so. So now we have what looks like an ascending broadening price pattern. Again, the ascending broadening is that it's ascending and it starts out narrow and widens at the top. So it's called an ascending broadening price pattern. And it's usually a bearish price pattern. So, Within the structure, you can see that we've also hit this resistance zone. So now we have a double top and you know, an ascending broadening price pattern. And then you know, I dig in and look at the price action in the pattern. So today we made a new high and we close at the low. We made a new high and we close at the low at this juncture. So I am surmising that we're gonna come back, pull back to this support zone. And if we breach that, you know, we're gonna probably pull back to here. Frankly, I think it's probably a good chance we come back to there. So the reasons why always become apparent later. So you know, like I said, I'm watching the news in the background. Everybody's bullish and saying, you know, now, you know, some of these stocks like Facebook and Amazon have been brought into a zone where they have value. They're not overvalued. They're trading a 25 multiple on and on. But the market doesn't care about any of that. And so, you know, the market structure is, you know, is saying something very different. And so this is all, you know, I trade. Now, you know, I kind of was pretty brazen. Uh, I want to record because, you know, um, one of the new age gurus is this woman, uh, Kathy Wood, who uh, runs this uh, ARC ETF and, you know, the, the financial channel has been playing it a lot. So it's become really a proxy for the tech sector and a proxy for a lot of investments. And, you know, I have a 19 year old kid, he's at college. And he goes, dad, I'm in, I'm in ARC, uh, you know, two days ago. And I, I, I said, get out of ARC and get into SQQQ. And so he, uh, he sold out of ARC at like 128 and it's at 120 today. So, but these kids are following this woman and, you know, I've gone and you can look at some of my previous Instagrams, my videos, and, you know, even this week's, you know, weekly video report, I, I, I you know, I accuse this woman of, of, of fleecing investors and being a fraud. 
And I said, look, I think this, you know, the stock when it was trading at 126 or something like that, I said, this is going to be at 100 before it's 150. And I said, if it gets to 150 first, I'm going to send a letter of apology to Kathy Wood. Well, I think she's fleecing investors. Uh, I think people don't understand um, what, what's happening in technology and the markets, and they're just going to get punished. Um, and I've had this feeling for a while, and now the markets are starting to confirm. So, you know, I've been drawing this, you know, head and shoulders, and then we have a double top here, and we had another shoulder here. Actually, this looks like another shoulder. And so when I was looking at this head and shoulders, and to me, it was also what I call a drooping head and shoulders. You'll notice the neckline, which is a line that connects the pattern is, is, dro you know, is drooping because the right shoulder is sitting below the left shoulder. So you have a head and shoulders, I'm sorry, a double top and a head and shoulders. And you punctured the neckline. And then as you always do, you kind of retest it. And then when you come through the neckline again, as we are now, that then is the green light. This is good to go on the downside. And so, you know, I think people are going to get hurt. All these kids who are following her, she's like a new age guru. Everybody says, you know, she walks on water. Uh, I think she's a fraud. So, you know, we'll see who's right here. But, you know, look, I'm not trying to fight an ego battle. I just, you know, I'm looking at what's happening here. So you can see that this is what this has been. This has been the conflict in the NASDAQ and, um, oh, you know, a lot of the, the stocks within the NASDAQ is that we have a tremendous amount of support along this long term ups. And, and then that, the QQQs look just like this, where, you know, at 297, the, the triple Qs bounced off here. And now if they if it retests this thing and starts coming under here, there's a lot of room underneath here. And that's what's going to happen. If we retest this support line, which is, you know, what's happening, you can see we've got this rounding top now. And we're going to be, you know, hurtling toward this support line very quickly. And anything below here is just, uh, you know, say good night. So this support line is kicked in with Tesla. I'll take a look at Tesla now. We were looking at it in this box. And I said to my friend when I was trading at 675, I said it has to go under, you know, the, we the weekly low, which was 651 the other day. And I think we slightly took it out. Where's Tesla? We went to, wow, we just went to 652. So this thing has been banging both sides of this box between 650 and 720. But I think that this is going to resolve itself to the downside. And again, you know, I defer to the, the you know, the, the, the pattern that governs this shape. So, you know, it's not easy when things start going against what you're looking at. But this is why, you know, I've been holding a whole bunch of short trades all this week and I go, trust the pattern, trust the pattern. And it's hard to do. It's been like a, uh, you know, three mail ox trade. You know, sometimes it's, you know, it's easy. Some, sometimes it's easier than others, but uh, I think now it's going to get easier for anybody who's short. So, you know, this to me was a very subtle looking double top all the way at the top. So this is Tesla. Um, you know, another one of these stocks that, you know, I think has captured a lot of imagination, but I question whether there's going to be a lot of long-term value there. And here we have the same trend line that we see in, you know, in ARC and, and the, the Qs where everything has bounced off this long-term trend line for a while, but should we revisit it? And I don't know where this is, probably somewhere around 500 bucks you know, there's going to be a lot of room underneath here. Um, so I'm, I'm also looking at some comments on YouTube. Um, so thanks. Uh, Thomas says, nice call on the QQQ break from the AM webinar. Yeah, so I got on you know, this morning before everything broke and I, you know, I said this thing, you know, is going to unwind and uh, it did throughout the day. Um, so again, this is, this is part of my process. You know, I've been explaining it through the week is that when I open up a chart, it could be anything. In this case, it's Tesla. I try and, 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 and see what is the phase or the condition of this instrument, what I'm looking at. 
you know, so at this point in time, uh, you know, Tesla has on balance obviously been going higher. And so, you know, the phase or the direction, you know, has been higher, but, you know, phases or, or environments change. And before they change, they always have a pattern. And so in this case, to my mind, I was looking at this double top and a double top is exactly what it sounds like. Sometimes it can be more subtle or, you know, more violent than others. But, you know, when you look back, this is a pronounced M top, a double top where it goes to, you know, the same peak twice, goes through the neckline, which is simply the line drawn through the pattern. And then with the word top in it, it says that, hey, we're over, over time going to go lower. Now, that's the key phrase over time. It's not going to go lower every single day. And you can see that, you know, it went higher and then it's been kind of just vacillating for the last week. And so, you know, things don't go straight up or straight down. But if we if we know what is the guiding pattern, what I call the governing pattern. So to me, this pattern will govern or dictate price behavior for days, weeks, months and possibly years, you know, after this. And so, you know, I will look to play this for whatever it gives me. And then, you know, people say, well, what's your take profit? And then I just look to the market, you know, does it come down here and then give me another pattern that, you know, suggests that we're going to go and then I'll get out. So, you know, I get out the same way, you know, I get in, but for right now, the governing pattern on this thing is lower. And, you know, we've watched, you know, these prices. Now you've kind of got this rounding top and buried within all of this price action at the start was this key reversal. So I look at a combination of patterns, you know, we have the double top and then the price action within the pattern and then on an ongoing basis. So right there, you had a key reversal. And today we have what's called an inside day bar where you can see the range from high to low of today is it within the range of yesterday. And so now if I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying, okay, we have a double top, this thing's going down. Now I'm looking for a way to, you know, get in sync with this chart, you know, where I can understand how to hop aboard the momentum and where to put my, and where and how and where to put my risk. That's, you know, these coil bars to me just create a, a, a suppression of energy. So all this is doing is that you can see that um, it, it didn't quite make a low, but it's, it's, it's creating this energy. And, and frankly, this energy has been building for a week. You have all of these days as inside really this range. So for the last week, you've just been building this energy. And now, you know, we're left to say, okay, well, where, you know, is the energy likely to release? And it's going to release by virtue of the dictating pattern. You know, this thing has started downward. We have a double top, we have a rounding top. And so to my mind, it's just gonna release in this direction. It's gonna uncork probably as soon as tomorrow. So to me, the way I'd set up this trade is put a sell, a, a sell short under here at uh, 650 or 651. Today's low, I think it was 652. I think this was 651. I thought we'd get under there today but we just held. So I would sell short at 650. And then I would put, you know, a buy stop right here. So to me, this is my risk. And that's my reward. You know, could be a 10 to one risk reward on this thing. And I told my wife up here, this thing's going to 300 bucks. And she, uh, you know, she thinks I'm out of my mind as most people do. But you know, these charts don't lie. And, uh, you know, I'm just a devotee to price action. Now, one of the trades that I also, you know, was looking at this week, and I, I, I said it's a, it's a stealth bull market, but this thing is going to get going to the upside. And when it does, it's going to be a barn burner. And you can see this is what happened. This is the pound versus New Zealand dollar. Yesterday, we, we had a head fake where, you know, made a high, went lower. And that's why I say you can't trust all the key reversals the same. And, you know, I analyzed this quite in detail this week where I said this was, a, you know, a bull trap and a double bottom. What I mean by bull trap was that, you know, in this time frame, we had like a giant like head and shoulders. 
And this should have sent this thing careening lower when it broke through the neckline. But instead of breaking lower, it just kind of went lower and now it's gonna trap those people that chase that low. And it's made a double bottom, just like we saw the double top in Tesla. This to me is a W bottom. Now you can see, you know, since it's formed this bottom, it's done nothing, but it's slowly inching its way higher. And by virtue of looking at these bars, made a new low, close at the high. These two guys told me that this thing was pointing in the direction where prices want to go. And so now you're at these weekly highs and uh, you know you can just buy this thing and, 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 and close your eyes and it will be up there. We also have a, a nice weekly re reversal happening. You know, obviously the bar doesn't close until uh, tomorrow, but now we have three weekly bars pointing in the direction where this thing is going. So, you know, when there's no mystery where something's going, I just load up with both cannons. You know, to me, there's almost no risk in this thing. So you have the double bottom, um, rounding bottom in this time frame. So all the way back five years ago, this told me what the governing price pattern is. So we're looking at the governing price pattern in Tesla, that double top. And these things can stay in place for a long time. This has been operating for five years and this has been in a stealth bull market. And eventually I think we'll see it up there. So once I understand what the governing pattern is, you know, whenever I get these things, yes, I'll take these things, these counter trend, but you know, I'm always looking to get in sync of what the pattern is indicating. And so we have a very subtle double bottom on the weekly as we did on the daily. We're made a new low, bounce off the low, and now you've got this W in there, and it's just been hovering above and below this neckline, but now we have three weekly closes after the double bottom. Made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high. And this was the same setup I took all the way back here and I'll show you. So this is point, this is pointing. So, you know, sometimes the market just, uh, the, not sometimes, the market actually points in the direction it wants to go. You just have to withstand and endure all of this. And I said on webinars weeks ago that this thing had bottom, but it's not gonna go from a straight down to a straight up. You know, the market needs to kind of what I, I, I call build some space away from this down so that it can create another movement higher. And that's what it's been doing. And the more space, the more building this has done means that the, the bigger this, so this was the same thing. This was right here. I saw this weekly reversal, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close on the high. And right here, I told them members to buy it at 175.09 or whatever that price was. And we wrote it all the way up here. So, you know, I'm looking for bigger moves in the markets. I'm not trying to figure out where the next 20 or 50 pips are and kind of duke it out with my broker, you know, in, in markets like this. I'm looking for a market like this to sort itself out and then I'm just going to get in and I'm, just, I'm not even, I'm not even going to look at it. I, I, you know, I could be in this thing for three weeks or three months, as long as the market will have me. And then, um, you know, we were talking about gold, you know, I think I was pretty, I said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty bearish gold. I think it'll go to 13, you know, 1750. It's, We'll have to see how this week kind of closes out. But you can see, despite yesterday's action, we pulled back. And I still think that on balance, um, you know, this is, you know, somewhat of a bearish chart. We did have some, rever you know, some support come in last week. On the basis of that, I took profits. And uh, I still think that we're looking like we could go back and retest somewhere in here before we get some kind of bounce. And then that'll be the same kind of inflection that we observed on the NASDAQ as to whether, you know, does it do this or that? Either way, there'll be a big opportunity. 
and uh, I'll be prepared for it. But right now, you know, the path of least resistance is still lower. I said, despite the fact that we had this reversal, made a new low, close on the high, indicated that there was going to be some support in here, I couldn't see prices going like that. So, you know, we're going to see how it closes. I, you know, good, good chance this thing will probably close on the low and, and then have another shot, you know, back down. And then, you know, I had a trade in the euro, uh, one of which was stopped out. And I did a weekly trade, and I'm still in that one. Let me see if it's still up here. No, this wasn't it. I sent out a trade a couple, two weeks ago to um, sell the euro uh, with a 120.37 stop so we got stopped out on the daily the other day but the uh, second trade is still in and frankly you know this still looks good to the downside you know so earlier in the week i looked at an inside setup because of all the volatility i got set up on you know i got stopped out on one trade but i have the other trade still on so i see this double top right here same kind of bearish price action made a new high close on the low made a new high close on the low it looks like we are closing below the neckline. And I think that we'll still get one more shot down to this 115 level. So that's really I, my entire focus, as you guys know, for the last three weeks. And, you know, that's, I, I just look for setups and opportunity. I'm not, you know, looking all over and I'm not looking to trade in and out a hundred times a day. I'm looking for something like the pound New Zealand that will have me for a week, three weeks, three months. You know, same with the NASDAQ, same with Zoom. You know, I've been short Zoom for you know, a couple of days. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be short that stock until it gives me a hundred bucks. Because I think there's, that's just going to cough up a huge uh, move to the downside. So that's what I do. I look at setups, price action, and I, I look for patterns that are going to put me in the bigger moves. And you're not always right, but I don't need to be right that many times. You know, if I get too big trade, I had a huge trade uh, this, you know, two weeks, three weeks ago, where I made seven figures. So, uh, you know, I can rest for the rest of the year. So it's a little bit different, you know, it's, you know, you want the rush, the action, you know, you want to trade in and out 40 times a day. This is not, you know, this is not where, you know, um, you're going to find, uh, you know, comfort because <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking for a few trades and I'm looking to sit in those trades. So Norman says, which one will give you a hundred down? So, you know, I've been short zoom. I showed you my, um, trade statement. Um, I've been talking about zoom all week and I think this is going to zoom, zoom down. So, I mean, we just look at it, you know, in this time frame. Actually, let me just peel back a little bit. Okay, get a bit of reference. So again, you know, people fall in love with the things that, you know, they become comfortable with and then they can't imagine how something that was so popular and so profitable could then, you know, do something, you know, in, in the opposite direction. So obviously Zoom came along, facilitated our lives during a very difficult time. You know, we obviously have a, an affinity with it. You know, it's making a, a lot of money. But, you know, now, you know, the charts are saying something very different and have been for a long time. So the charts have been speaking all the way up here. Well, you have this double top, you have this head and shoulders, which looks just like a man or woman's, you know, head and shoulders. It's actually a complex head and shoulders because you have a number of peaks in the shoulder. So you call this a complex shoulder where you have a number of peaks. So anyhow, um, I'm drawing it really badly. So you have the, the head and shoulders and the neckline's either here or here, where the long-term neckline is. And then you have this double top right here. 
And so this has just been a, dis, a distribution zone where, you know, the, the sellers have been handing the stock, you know, over to anybody who's been willing to buy it. And uh, it's been, you know, so the, 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 the smart money has been getting out of the stock. And you can see now we close, you know, a hair below the zone. And so this whole thing is a distribution zone. The whole thing is, is, is it's, it's a six month top. And frankly, you know, if we measure from uh, 316 to the top of this thing around 586, I don't know what that is, 270 bucks. Let's, let's take off uh, 200 bucks off this and you come down to a hundred dollars. So, you know, I said, I'm looking to make a hundred dollars in the stock. I think it could go down $200. So this thing is one of the prototypes of the NASDAQ and why I think the NASDAQ is going to crash. A company is valued based on the present value of its future income streams. And you discount those future income streams, you know, with an interest rate. So now what's happening is you have a decelerating cash flow because Zoom's not going to make as much money this year as it did last because, you know, we're not all going to be in lockdown. So now you have decelerating cash flows being discounted at a higher interest rate. And that's just going to create a valuation collapse. So I don't need to know all that mumbo jumbo. All I have to do is look at this picture. A picture is worth a thousand words. And, you know, we're going to come down here. Um, so Kai says, I think WTI, which is crude oil, will stay bullish. The economy is the driver. I don't think the demand... See, I don't think about the economy. I don't think about demand. I don't think in those terms. I think in terms of price. Price is the news. So I'm not smart enough to figure out, you know, demand and inputs. And the market tells me everything I need to know. So where is crude oil? So I think at the beginning of the week, I said I would get out of crude oil. Uh, you know, Graham, you know, one of our participants at, on this webinar uh, remembers that. You know, I said, this is just a huge distribution zone. You know, it's multi-year you're coming up against. And you can see this is where all of the resistance is. And it came here. And so it's not a surprise that we have a setback at this zone. This is a, you know, a resistance zone that's been in place for years. So it, you know, it could do its thing, come back, we'll see. But, uh, you know, I just think in terms of price. I don't think of demand and the economy because what happens when you start thinking like that, when the thing goes down, now you start saying, well, you know, you start talking yourself into your trade, you know, so this will come back and this will come back and the thing's going down and you know, it's just in a knot. And so, you know, I just think in terms of risk and reward. Where do I get in this trade? And what's my risk? And the reward will take care of itself if you, you know, if you hit the right trade. Uh, Mehmet says, would you trade WTI? I trade everything. I, I trade two, uh, you know, insects going up a wall if I could price it. Um, so I'll turn it over now and, you know, that's basically the gist of, you know, what I'm, I was trying to convey in these, um, forums over the last couple of days is that, you know, a, a way of looking at the markets through the prism of price structure. Um, so does this make sense to you guys? Do you, you know, does it resonate with you? Can you see, um, you know, can you see how this could, could, uh, improve your trading? Uh, so John says, uh, very much so. Daya says, I can you know, see it for sure. Um, with sounds, thank you. Uh, this is just amazing. Um, Tina says, absolutely. Um, so Goran, of course. So this is what I've been doing for years. And, you know, 
Um, sometimes I think I'm just getting old and there's newfangled ways to do things. But uh, to me, I see things very visually. So I can, I just, you know, have all of these charts, whether it be, you know, FX, where I just go through them every, you know, here's my list of charts. And I can go through this in 10 minutes. It looks like a lot, but I know what I'm looking for. I can just open up a chart and it's, it either speaks to me or it doesn't. If it doesn't speak to me, I just move on. And really what I'm looking to do is reject a lot of trades and whittle it down just to a few trades where I can really hone in and understand the risk and reward. And um, Neil says, what are you looking for in volume? I don't look at volume. I don't look at any indicators. What you see on this chart is all I look at to make information, you know, make, you know, trades, you know, that result in hundreds of thousands and, and frankly, millions of dollars. This is it. This picture tells me, is the market going up or is it going down? You know, is there support? Is there a pattern? Is there price action? Where can I get in, you know, where I understand my risk and reward? So Darius says, how do you determine, you know, risk? So basically I look at, um, so for instance, Zoom, uh, I got in right up here at this key reversal at 346 when it you know, broke under this you know, inside day bar. And so frankly, I didn't think it would get above this key reversal high. So you know, I got in here and I thought my risk was very low based on the pattern. And I thought my reward was very high. In fact, I'm pissed that I, I didn't do more of this. Um, so, you know, and the options were priced pretty high. So usually I do options, but I remember at the time they were priced pretty high, uh, but there was probably a reason for it. So I shorted the shares. And so just 2000 shares is, you know, you have to commit $700,000. So um, yeah, I'm probably gonna, you know, sell much more as it breaks this low. I don't see that there's any risk in this stock. So Gareth says, my trading has improved in just the two weeks. Um, Norman says, what do you trade if it's not options? So I just sell short the stock. Uh, Vincent says, amazing sessions. Thank you for sharing your methodology. You're welcome, Vincent. Um, so somebody, and I want to answer this. This really kind of pisses me off. There's a disconnect. Somewhere you claim to be making all this money. Why are there so many reviews on you making even calling you a scammer. So first off, um, and I'm going to ask you to post these reviews um, where um, it's on. Uh, you can go and read reviews. Um, I forgot what the website is. It's um, Trustpilot. So Trustpilot is an independent, verified um, ranking or rating service where reviews cannot be altered. And so if you just go and see what other people have to say, if you want to just leave all the haters there, you know, so here is the link right here. So this cannot be manipulated. So here, so Valentine said, look at this first. It's not true what he says. Okay, then prove it. I've told, you know, so I do these, these webinars live and in front of you, you know, I've told you what I'm doing all week. So how can it be a manipulation in front of, uh, you know, people all last week? Uh, I mean, two weeks ago, I did the same webinar. I started out on Monday. I said, I'm very bearish. And I showed them my account coming in on Tuesday. So on Monday, the first, I started a webinar series. I said, I'm very bearish the NASDAQ. So I put on all these options and lost half my money by the second day. And I was down 24,000. By the third day, you know, I was up 142. And by the fourth day, I was up 348, but I had actually taken off a lot. So what else do you want me to show you? If you don't believe it, then, you know, that's just up to you. So I think that's the only negative review. I think there was 4% bad and 80, so. You know, go ahead and read this. I'll actually put this in here. And actually, I'm going to ask you to share your own review and say whatever you want to say. 
So somebody, you know, Neil says, why bother answering? And I know I take the bait. I get really pissed off because, you know, I spend all this time, uh, you know, in complete transparency. I've showed you exactly what I do. And I showed you all during the worst week where everything, the whole week was going against me until today. So, um, yeah, I always take the bait because there's always going to be somebody out there who's just, <laughs> you know, can't improve their own lives. So they got to take somebody else down. Um, so, you know, you can read what, you know, other people are saying on this uh, chat board. Uh, so, yeah, I shouldn't get diverted, but I feel like, you know, I need to be, you know, the reason I got into this business was because of all the misrepresentation and scammers. And I committed to be completely transparent. So I show you my account, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I've been showing you from the beginning of the week, uh, Zoom. Uh, and yesterday, Zoom, you know, went down $10 and then it went back up $10. And, you know, I made something in the morning and by the end of the day, it was, it was gone. You can see right here, here was the reversal where, you know, went to 3.20 in the morning. By the end of the day, you know, I wasn't making any money. And now you can see today uh, what's happened. So, and I've been saying since the beginning of the week. Um, so anyhow. So there's a lot of good uh, comments coming through on YouTube. I really appreciate it from Vivian and Yana and GM uh, and Kim, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Um, so that's basically what, you know, what I got here, really what I wanted to do in these sessions was to kind of give you a feeling of how I visualize markets. And, you know, it's a four step process. If you bought my book uh, yesterday, it kind of spells it out where I try and identify the phase or the condition of the market. So, um, you know, just coming back to Zoom, you know, and the same thing with, uh, you know, Tesla. So this was, you know, coming up into this market, you know, a bull market. But over the last, whatever, six months, you can see that in a stealth way, just like pound New Zealand, you know, it's been backing and filling, but it's dropped from $588 to 316 you know, almost in half. So hard to argue that this is not now in a downtrend. So when I open up a chart like this, you know, I, I can appreciate that to, to most, it kind of looks like it's like nothing. It's just, you know, just waves and it's going up and down, you know, it's kind of plus or minus, you know, the 400 level. But to me, you know, I look within, you know, the price action and then look for the pattern. What is the guiding pattern? And so this pattern here that happened whenever it was six, eight months ago, this to me has been governing or dictating and will keep governing and dictating the further the future price action. So there's always some pattern that, you know, uh, establish itself, whether it was a week ago, a month ago, or five years ago, that gives us guidance as to where, you know, that instrument is going. And then in the, you know, in the near term, you have this double top, you know, top here, you cut through the neckline, you retested the neckline, you did a double top here, and now you're about to break it all. And now there's nothing but white space underneath this thing. You know, and then I, I kind of look at, you know, what I call the weight of the market. So you have all of this price action, you know, sitting on, you know, just a few bars defending all of that. And eventually that weight is going to give give way. And this thing is, you know, it's just got to come crumbling down. So I just look at the market in terms of a structure. I put boundaries around it. And that way I can, I can, you know, look, it doesn't look so random. You know, I look at the price action. So I see the double top and then I see this huge key reversal. So these things actually point in the direction they want to go. Now, sometimes, you know, it takes a little while before the market gets going in the direction where that was pointing. But that was always pointing where it wanted to go. The combination of this pattern, this reversal, you know, is pointing lower. And now you, can, you have the two key reversals here, the two double tops there. And so there's just like no ambiguity 
to me, there's like no risk in this stock being short. I, I don't lose any sleep. I don't check my phone to see what my position is doing. All this week, I've been short and it's been, you know, kind of bouncing around here. And uh, I, I was just, if it went up, I was just going to add more to my position. Uh, Kara says, can we still get your book? Uh, I'll put the link there. Um, and as I said, you know, the proceeds from the book, I, um, I donate um, whatever you pay for the book. I, I double that. Oh, it's expired. So we did it yesterday and it's expired. But you can, if you uh, call our, uh, here, let me put the, um, So just um, send an email to our support team and, you know, say you want the book and they'll send you a link and then uh, it's a pay what you want. So whether you pay five or $10 or 20 or 50, whatever you pay, I take that amount and double it and send it to the American Childhood Cancer Organization. Uh, so Mustafa wants to take a final look at, so I'll take it, a look at the, um, NASDAQ through the prism of the triple Qs. And this is where I convinced myself. Um, it was on a webinar to our master pattern traders. You know, every Friday I do it at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And I was doing my, my song and dance to them, you know, kind of analyzing this thing. And I said, there's not one, but there's like four bear patterns that I see on this thing. And after, and it was after the master pattern trader on February 19th at around 1 p.m. I said, you know, I went through my, 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 my presentation and based on what I was looking at, I said, I, I just loaded up. I bought $100,000 worth of puts that expired the next week. And if I wasn't right, I was going to lose everything. But it was that kind of conviction I had. when I. So this is the triple Qs. The triple Qs are an ETF that trace the NASDAQ. And this is what I was looking at, you know, a couple of weeks ago where you had this ascending broadening price pattern. That was one. Then you had, let me just, a double top. That was two. Then you had a head and shoulders. That was three. And then you had what's called an island top. So you can, you know, on my other charts, it's continuous. It's a 24 hour chart. On this, it, it creates gaps because there's a morning, uh, a closing and an opening. And you can see there are two gaps here, which means that this whole thing was orphaned. This whole thing up here created this island. So this is an, you know, an island top. I call it a long island. So when I went through this on that Friday and I said, there's not one, but there's four bearish price patterns here. I just uncorked on this thing. And this is what has kept me so bearish all that time, despite the fact that we've just been rallying for a week and a half. Now that's the thing about bear markets. Bear market rallies are, you know, they're just gut wrenching. Bear market rallies are vicious. You can see how big and violent they are. But this to me was just a bear market rally, a dead cat bounce that's just bouncing and it's gonna, it's gonna drop. And so you have four different price patterns that are saying that there's a massive top up here and uh, you know we're gonna go lower. So Mustafa, that, you know, that's why I had the conviction and you can see we had a mini double top right here. Prices went exactly to the high of the previous day yesterday. And then we just gapped lower today and kept going. And so, you know, I'm expecting tomorrow to be kind of a humdinger. Keep going. I don't see that there's going to be anything to stop this thing. Graham says, awesome session. Thanks as always. You're welcome, Graham. 
Uh, so Mustafa says, I've made loads on the NASDAQ short. Mustafa, I'm so glad you're such a good guy. Uh, John says, great teaching. You spun me around for the better. I've deleted all the, the noise from the past to focus on your plan. I watch you live during the day and your YouTube at night. Very excited for my trading future. So good on you, John. Uh, Frank says, do you think it's too late for me to enter any trade or should I wait till next week? No, you should, you should enter today. So one way to take advantage of the falling uh, NASDAQ, and this is actually um, also a good, so when patterns don't do what they look like they're going to do, then they, let me just kind of, then it's almost like an invitation to, you know, do the opposite. So, you know, this was kind of the, And again, the market throws you so much crap that it forces you to obviously rethink your notions or whatnot. But, you know, I thought I was seeing an, an invert. And this is the SQQQ. So this is um, an inverse ETF, which means that it goes in the opposite direction of the NASDAQ. So obviously, this thing has been going lower for a long time. You know, we kind of had this triangle that kind of got cut off there and then it broke out. So it's been going lower because the NASDAQ's been going higher. But in this time frame, you have this rounding bottom and this inverted head and shoulders. And so here you kind of broke out. And uh, now you retested. So this kind of looks like the British pound versus New Zealand dollar, where you had both a double bottom and uh, a rounding bottom. You can see right here, you had a double bottom there and then it broke through the neckline of this double bottom and then came back retested and put a rounding bottom here. And this is what this SQQQ now looks like. So we broke out, we retested this neckline, now we put this rounding bottom and now I can imagine that we're gonna go the other way. So this is one way to play the NASDAQ. Uh, and it's it's three times. Uh, so if the NASDAQ falls 3% as it did today, this thing will go up 9%. So you get your bang for your buck. It's pretty fun. You know, it's a low price thing. You can, you know, uh, put your risk and reward. So, you know, you could buy it here, put your stop there. You have a dollar reward, a dollar risk, and you probably make five, six, seven bucks if this thing goes. So this is a great risk reward uh, play. And, you know, I don't think, you know, we've, we've even started. So I'm looking for this thing to come through the neckline here, which is about the roughly the 310 area on the queues. And then once it gets through there, I think it's, you know, it's good to go. So you have this inverted head and shoulders and, um, you know, this rounding bottom. So this is a good way to play the NASDAQ. Uh, ben says, what do you think about the Dow? So, you know, look, you've had a bifurcation, you know, it's been, you know, the, 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 the NASDAQ and the Dow and the S&P have been going in different directions. Uh, today, you also, I think, also had a reversal in the Dow, but the Dow is stronger. No, you didn't have a full reverse. Uh, this is the weekly. So, yes, you did. So, um, Yeah, I want to show you guys something that, you know, really scares me. I don't think people understand what's coming at them in terms of how bearish this could be. So, yes, you had the same kind of key reversal price action. You were up 200 on the Dow all day and you closed down 80 or 100, but you close on the low. That's all I look at. And so you also have this ascending broadening thing that you kind of broke out of. Actually, you got right so look at how these things work when you draw these lines. So you snuck out there and then you close at the low. So, you know, I think we're coming there and then we're coming there and probably coming there. So people say, well, oh, you got, you know, the Federal Reserve so friendly, you've got, you know, all this stuff and, you know, how can that happen? You know, economy is gonna be growing at 7%. People are going back to the restaurants, spending all this money. How could, you know, and the, 
the market priced all of that in here. The market is a discounting effect. So this was going up when it was expecting this reopening. Now the reopening is here. You know, tell me something I don't know. And that's what the market does. The market is ahead of events. That's why, you know, you can't look at the BBC or the analysts or have them, you know, tell you what they think. Uh, they, they don't have a clue. Now, I'm kind of looking at something here. And, you know, it's a little bit out there. Well, wait a minute, let me go to the S&P. This is kind of the same thing. It's, you know, hard to imagine, but um, people can't imagine until things actually happen. So you have this large megaphone reverse triangle. Now, <laughs> You know, this is a very bearish thing, which, you know, says this is going to come here. And if it comes there, it's going to go. And, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen, you know, until it happens. And you see, this is a weekly chart. And now you've got these two reversals right here. We don't know if this is a reversal. And then until, you know, tomorrow closes. But I can well imagine that we're going to go even lower. You know, and if we start breaking up into here, uh, you know, I don't know where this thing could go, but I think it, you know, could come back to here. So, you know, I'm a lot more bearish than uh, a lot, a lot of people out there. And um, it's just the charts are, you know, just telling me something's going to happen. I've been thinking like this for the last three weeks. I've said this on every one of my webinars, every one of my video reports, um, every one of my newsletters. Um, I think the title of last week's Sunday report, March 14th, was the tech reckoning is on deck. I said, despite last week's rally, I'm not abandoning my analysis. The tech wreck is probably not over. A break below 310 on the QQQs will be a catalyst for another big decline in the NASDAQ. So I've been saying this for a month and we just started breaking today. So... This is what my newsletter looks like. Um, you know, I do analysis on the dollar, the NASDAQ, the gold. I was looking at the pound yen higher. Uh, and this is my analysis on the triple Qs. And I, I, put, I said put a sell stop in the triple Qs or the equivalents at that time. And then also on Sunday, you know, a week ago uh, or whatever, the beginning of the week, I said sell short at 338. We're now 316. So, um, It's really not magic if you know what you're looking at. Uh, Om wants to know about Uber. So I always like to put up as much history as I can just to see what, you know, something is doing and you know, again, you know, I've been um, long lift, which I think has been a better, um, you know, a ride than Uber, no pun intended. Uh, but I just, you know, I'm very hesitant to own, you know, NASDAQ stocks right now, you know, feeling of what's coming. And so, you know, Uber's in this kind of triangle here and, you know, it could bounce here. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, frankly, not looking at buying anything right now with what I see, you know, coming. I mean, there are certain like bank stocks like Bank of America I own and, uh, you know, a Simon Property Group, SPG, you know, very unsexy type stocks uh, I own just for long term dividend plays and, you know, and other reasons. But, you know, in, you know, in terms of trading, because of my bias that things are going to unwind, you know, I see this. Uh, this potential double top up here. Like I said, you know, there are other stocks that I'd rather short than Uber and Lyft, but you know, um, you can see the key reversal there, the key reversal there. And it looks like we're gonna pull back at least to this, you know, support line in here. So, um, you know, I like, uh, you know, I made a ton of money buying Lyft 
around the mid 40s and you can see that it's you know this is likely to hold up much better and i'd rather buy lyft than than uber so craig says before we start i just want to say thank you we should all be grateful every day i've i've found a new gratitude and that's not a weird thing so if not and not just for what i'm learning in trading i found a new reason to live and i'm excited thank you Craig, wow, that's great. So let me go through some of these questions here. Uh, James, I looked at gold. Um, Antoine, uh, UVXY. So UVXY is a um, volatility. It's a lagging. But if the you know S and P turns, this is going to turn too, and it may be just one of those things that you could buy for seven bucks and watch it go to fourteen. So you can see that we made a new bottom yesterday and then we didn't follow through. So you've got this three day inside day bar coil. So I would certainly buy, you know, a new high in this, uh, where's UVXY, I have it somewhere up here. So the high today was 723. You know, I put a buy stop in UVXY at 725, you know, and it's something you don't have to risk a lot in, you know, you just risk, you know, to the low here. So yeah, I mean, once the S&P starts turning, this thing will start turning the other way. So Colin says, do you still hold on to trades when prices are going when, when, when there's no, so, you know, this is a stock and quite honestly, I got in early. Uh, and I just held it. Um, you know, to me, this looks like the upside down version of Lyft, where Lyft had such a profound double bottom that um, I don't know where to put this thing. And this has such a profound double top that I think it's just a question of time before it goes down. But you know, I, I you know sometimes I get over enthusiastic and I go too early. And in this case, I did. So to me, this has just got a classic top that was confirmed when it goes through the neckline. So you can see, you know, what happens is that these things go through the neckline, then they retest the neckline. But if they fail, the failure is, you know, quite extraordinary. And so, you know, I got in early on this thing. I got in right here at like 206. And I watched this thing go to 220 on me. I didn't have a stop loss in it. And uh, it wasn't fun. You know, it was one, two, three, four, five days, you know, six days of watching this thing, you know, go against you. But I'm still short at 206, close under 211. I'm still losing five bucks on it. But, you know, talk to me next week when, you know, I think it's going to be down there. So, yeah, I, you know, I am uh, a little bit stubborn. And when I really see trades that, you know, um, there's a, a pattern or something like this, um, I'll hold on a little longer. And you can see that these short covering rallies are not fun. And I've been sitting six days of losing money in this stock. But I think uh, eventually I'll, uh, I'll come right. So it just depends. But if I'm just like, you know, doing something, I'm trading the euro pound, I'm looking for something, I put a 50 pip stop and it stops me out, then bang, I'm gone. Certain trades like this, I just kind of set up for a bigger paradigm, a longer term view. And I'm happy to sit in them for weeks and months. Uh, Tina wants to know about Kato. So I was bullish on this several weeks ago, uh, I had a whole bunch of money I was making in the call options. And then um, it cratered on me. And I got out even I was making uh, 80 grand, I was making three to one on my money. And uh, the thing cratered on me and I was lucky to get out with uh, my option premium intact. I was pretty pissed about that. Um, but no, it looks like Kados is going to roll the other way. You know, it has this, you know, head and shoulders type thing. And so, yeah, no, I think it's just going to go back down. So look, I think a lot of stocks are going to get hammered uh, now. 
And you need to be careful if you're in the stock market um, playing on the long side. But if you're gonna play on the long side, I look at stuff like this, like Simon Property Group uh, for long-term plays that paid me when I got in this thing at like in the nineties, it paid me like 6%. And then it put, you know, another 20% move on. So this is a mall operator, you know, very unsexy kind of play. But, um, you know, I think that you can get like four or 5% on your money while you're waiting. And I think this thing will go back to 150 at some point. So if you're going to be long, just, you know, hang out in bank stocks uh, or, you know, very like REITs or something that, you know, gives you a dividend. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, my, you know, my sentiments, I think uh, the market could go down 20% from here. Sim says, would you get out of lift? Uh, not really. I think that it's, it's going to, if you have a longer term mentality, I would stay in it. All right, guys, I think I'm going to, you know, leave you there. What I'd really appreciate if you could, you know, so others who think that, you know, I'm somewhat other than what I represent, you know, you can share your feelings. Um, I'm going to put the link uh, in um, the chat box here. Let me just, um, and I would really appreciate if you guys uh, would let me know your thoughts your experience, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, there's a link, I put it in the uh, chat box, thepatterntrader.com share. You can say I had a bad experience, a good experience, and then you know really appreciate if you put your comments. So you know if you have a good experience, it'll ask you why, and similarly for bad. So uh, all your feedback uh, would be gratefully appreciated. I, I learn a lot from it, you know, what I need to, to do to make my communications more effective. Um, Chad says, what is the next step to uh, following you? Um, so if you'd like to sign up to my elite program, it's Mark Shaw's in elite at gmail.com. And then uh, in the subject line, just say, let's do this. Um, and if you want to sign up for our LEAP program, uh, one of our team members will walk you through that. So uh, check that out. Uh, Sonny uh, says, thanks a lot. It was very in helpful and interesting. So thanks, Sonny. Appreciate if you uh, put some comment, uh, whatever you felt. Gabriella says, great session as always. Uh, you're welcome. Victor says, looking forward to the next one. So, you know, I plan to do these things on an ongoing basis every couple of weeks or so. Um, so I enjoy it, you know, I, you know, this is why I do it. You know, I enjoy interacting with people, you know, just sitting in front of a screen and watching prices all day, which is what I've done for a long time. You know, it's, it's great. It's very, you know, rewarding when you have a day like this, when you're short and the whole thing comes crashing down, but I much prefer kind of giving back, sharing what I've learned. And, um, Brent says great value investment of time. So thanks guys. Uh, appreciate, appreciate you guys a lot. Um, I would uh, appreciate if you have any thoughts one way or another that you put your comments on that link. I put it in the chat box. And uh, so, uh, so Craig says, look forward to tomorrow's session. So I do a master pattern session to, tomorrow. Uh, Ali, I think the book is uh, ebook. Um, so Dino says, would you do something about options? I don't know what you're referring to. You mean with the um, QQQs? So I, you know, I trade options um, quite actively. And uh, I actually took a poke at uh, buying these uh, 310 options today at about a buck 50. And I think they closed over two bucks. So, but they expire tomorrow. So it's a, you know, it's a do or die situation. But I think they will be follow through tomorrow. I can't see how they won't be. Bruce says, what a great experience to be listening to you over the past few days. Bruce, thanks. That's a very nice thing to say. All right, guys, I'm going to love and leave you here. Uh, thanks a ton, and I will uh, see you next time.